Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over the chain rule, which is a derivative rule, which you'll probably use more than any other derivative rule. And it seems a little complicated and confusing at first, but hopefully uh, once you kind of understand what's going on behind this rule, it, it's a little bit more intuitive. Okay, so let's start off with an example. Let's start off with f of x equals e to the x, right? So we just showed how to calculate the derivative of this function in the previous video, right? So f prime of x which we could also write as df dx, right? Derivative of f with respect to x equals e to the x, right? So this is derivative of f with respect to x is what this df dx means, right? Derivative of f with respect to x, right? So we showed in the last video that this is equal to e to the x, okay? And, you know, if this was the only thing we we're doing, we'd be done, right? But let's say that this x is actually its own function, right? Let's say that x of t is 2t. So x isn't just x, it's actually a function of time, and the function of time is two times t. Okay, well then what would the be the derivative of this function, f, with respect to this new variable t, right? So what would be the derivative of f with respect to t. So wrt means with respect to, right? I'm going to say this is wrt. So what is the derivative of f with respect to t? Now, this new variable time, right? So let's say that x is like the number of individuals in a population. So then f of x tells you the number of individuals at the next, you know, step is some, you know, the number that they reproduce is e to the x, where x is the number of individuals. But let's say that x is a function of time, then it's a new question, right? This would be, what's the rate of change as a function of the individuals, x, but t would be, what's the rate of change with respect to time, right? So, so it's a different rate altogether, right? It's not even the same question anymore, right? But we can compute this derivative by just sort of, you know, playing around with this differential notation, right? So df... And so f prime of t, right, that'd be df dt, right, which would be df dt, which is equal to, right, derivative of f with respect to time. Well, we know the derivative of f with respect to x, right? And we could compute the derivative of x with respect to time, right? I just take this derivative, x prime of t, right, that's dx dt, derivative of f, x with respect to time, which would just be 2, right? The slope of that line, right? So then the derivative of f with respect to t would just be the derivative of f with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to time because these dx's are going to cancel in this notation, right? So that gives me, okay, e to the x of t, right? That's my derivative of f with respect to x times derivative of x with respect to time, which is 2. So I get 2 e to the x, right? So this tells me I get 2 e to the x of t, right? But this is a function of time now, right? This is f prime of t. So let's make this a function of t. So let's plug in x of t equals 2t, right? Then f prime of t becomes 2 e to the 2t, right? Right, so, you know, our function f of t was given by f of x of t, which is e to the 2t, right? e to the x of t, which gives us e to the 2t. And this has derivative f prime of t is equal to f prime of x of t times x prime of t equals 2e to the 2t, right? So this is chain rule okay so the chain rule is you know you can write this in this form right so chain rule says for a function f of t let's say where f is actually a function of x which is a function of t right so like f of x of t the derivative of this function 
f prime of t is the derivative of the outside function with respect to the inside, evaluated at the inside, times the derivative of the inside function with respect to your actual variable, right? So this is the same thing as df dx times dx dt in differential notation would be equal to df dt, right? So this is the chain rule, right? And then at the end of the day, you plug in your function x of t to make it look like just a function of t, okay? And so this may seem like it's a little bit out of nowhere, but really you're just kind of pushing around. Um, you're really just converting between uh, rates of change to rates of change of different variables. So let's do an example of this. I'd right, say you're driving a car at constant speed, 60 miles per hour. Right, we could write this distance, distance in miles, driven at hour x. Right, we could describe that by a function f of x, right, where x is the number of hours we've driven, the number of miles we've gone would be 60 times x, right? And then the derivative of this function, right, f prime of x, which would be the derivative of f with respect to x, df dx, right, that's going to be 60 miles per hour, right? Constant speed, 60 miles per hour. So the derivative of your distance should be that constant speed, 60 miles per hour. Right, but let's say we want to know what the speed was in miles per minute, right? Well, that's the same thing as saying that x in hours is a function of t in minutes, right? We could rewrite this as a function of time, or, or I guess just a function of t, a different variable that's measured in minutes instead, right? So then in this case, this function would look like x of t is one over 60 times t, right? So when t equals 60, 60 minutes, that's one hour, right? When t is 120, 120 minutes, divided by 60 gives me two hours, right? So t in minutes gives me x in hours, according to this function, right? And the derivative of this function, right? dx dt, that would give me one over 60, right? Just the rate of change of this, it's a linear, equation, so the derivative is just the slope, 1 over 60. And the units of this would be hours per minute, right? So this is almost like a, a unit conversion factor here, right? 1 hour per 60 minutes, right? 1 hour per 60 minutes, right? That's basically just converting between hours and minutes. So if I wanted to convert this speed, 60 miles per hour, to speed in minutes, that would be just multiplying by this conversion factor or exactly applying the chain rule to this function, right? So speed in miles per minute, right? We can apply the chain rule. So the chain rule says that f of t now, right? Where f is a function of x of t, right? So this would be my 60, miles per hour times the hours I've gone, where now hours is going to be given by this function of minutes. So this would be 60 times 1 over 60 t. Right? So this actually gives me t, but, but we'll just leave it like this for now. So let's say we, we somehow don't know how to multiply that together. right? So we want to apply the chain rule to compute this derivative, right? the speed in miles per minute. So that would be f prime of t, right, which is uh, df dt, right? Using differential notation, I think it's a little easier to kind of keep track of this, right? So this is df dx times dx dt, right? We've computed these separately, right? This is the rate of change of f with respect to x, so the speed in miles per hour times this conversion factor from hours to minutes, right? So this gives me 60 miles per hour, right, that's df dx, times one hour per 60 minutes, right? This is the derivative of x with respect to time, so converting between minutes and hours, right? So then this gives me one mile 
per minute. Okay, so this is kind of a, a simple example of the chain rule being applied to basically linear functions. And in that case, you're just multiplying slopes together, right? And, and this is exactly what you'd expect it to be, right? So 60 miles per hour is equivalent to one mile per minute, right? They're the same speed. They're just measured in different increments of time, okay? And so the chain rule is just a way to, is a way to compute new speeds, right? New rates of change change by multiplying rates of changes together. Multiplying rates of change of different variables together. Right, so when these rates of change of different variables aren't just nice clean uh, numbers, that's why you need the chain rule. Okay, so let's do, let's do another example. And the more examples you see of this, I think the more intuitive the rule becomes. Right, so let's do an example. Let me look at my notes. Right, so let's say the function f of t is one over one plus t squared. Okay, so right now this looks like maybe we apply the quotient rule to this, but um, we're gonna show how to do this with the chain rule instead. Okay, so the first way to do this, first step is to write this as a function composition, right? We wanna be able to write this as a composition of two functions, similar to the way we did it above, right? So uh, let's say f of x, right? Our outer function will be one over x. This is our outer function. And then our inner function would be x of t, is one plus t squared. This would be our inner function, right? And then if I think about f of t, well, that's just f of x of t, right? That's applying uh, one over x, right? f of x of t gives me one over x of t, right? So that's the outer function, f of x equals one over x, and then we apply the inner function, one over one plus t squared to get my f of t, right? So you're kind of splitting this up into an inner and an outer function. Okay, then the next step is to compute the derivative of each piece, right? And their derivatives with respect to different variables. So f prime of x, right? This is df dx, derivative of f with respect to x, well, derivative one over x, that's negative one over x squared. That's just the power rule, okay? And the derivative of x of t, right? So x prime of t, right? That's dx dt, derivative of x with respect to time. Well, that's the derivative of this polynomial, which just gives me two t, okay? And the derivative, Step three, derivative is the product, right? This is applying the chain rule basically. So we say, okay, my derivative, f prime with respect to t, that's df dt, derivative of f with respect to t. By differential notation, I know this is df dx, derivative of f with respect to x, times derivative of x with respect to time, dx dt. Right? or what I computed above, right? f prime of x times x prime of t. So I multiply these two together. I get negative one over x squared times two t. All right, and we're not done yet because this is f prime of t, it's supposed to be a function of time. I have a function of x and time here. So the last step is then to substitute in the inner function. In the inner function, right? So in this case, that would be x of t equals one plus t squared, right? So I substitute that in, I get f prime of t equals negative one over x of t squared times two t. 
that gives me negative 2t over 1 plus t squared squared. Okay. So we substitute in x of t, where we had an x, and then we plug in what x of t is, right? It's 1 plus t squared. So we plug that in there. Now it's just a function of time. Okay. And if we were to compute the same derivative using the um, quotient rule, we would get the same answer for this case, right? So you don't always have to apply, uh, there's not always one way to take these derivatives, there's often multiple ways, depending on how you look at the function. Okay, so let's do an example where we have to do this chain rule, basically have to apply it twice, right? So this will be another example. And hopefully this is becoming a little more intuitive. Right? So let's say we have f of x equals one minus x to the fourth power plus one, the whole thing squared, right? So this is really, we can think about this as three function compositions, right? So let's write as a function composition. Let's say this is f of x equals f of g of h of x, right? This will be like a three part function. So the innermost function would be this h of x, right? This is sitting on the inside of this composition, right? So if we look at this function here, what's the innermost thing I can find? Well, that's sitting right here, one minus x, right? So let's say this will be one minus x is my innermost function, h. Then the next function would be g of x, right? That would be the function that's not the outermost function, but it's somewhere in the middle, right? So for this case, that would be this, term inside the square, right? So this would be h to the fourth plus one, right? g of h, g is a function of h, would be this term here, the fourth plus one, h to the fourth plus one, which is sitting inside this square, right? And then our outermost function would be f of g, would be this g right here, squared, right? That's our outermost function. Right, if we were to apply these sequentially, right, f of g of h would give me h to the fourth plus one squared, and then f of g of h of x would then be, we'd plug in h into one minus x into h. That'd give us one minus x to the fourth plus one squared, right? So, so recognizing, you know, how to write this as a function composition, that's kind of the tricky part here. Right? But once you have this written as a function composition, the rest is pretty straightforward. Right? So number two, we compute derivatives of each piece. Right? So we compute each derivative. We say, okay, h prime of x, right? that's our innermost function. Derivative of h with respect to x. Well, h was one minus x. So the derivative of one minus x is negative one. Okay. And then g prime of h, right? Derivative of g with respect to h. Well, that was, if we go back up, that was h to the fourth plus one. So the derivative of that with respect to h is 4h cubed. And then f prime of g, well, f of g was just g squared. So df dg is 2g. All right. Then step three says we multiply these together. Let's switch back to black. Derivative is the product of these, right? This is the chain rule step, right? So d, so f prime of x, that's df dx, that's df dg times dg dh times dh dx, right? So this is just, uh, canceling out these differentials, right? So dg cancels with dg, dh cancels with dh, you're left with df dx, right? So this is just applying the chain rule here. Just converting between rates of change of different variables, right? So we multiply these all together, we get two times g times four h cubed times minus one, okay? And so we can rewrite that just for notation. This is negative two g, 4h cubed. All right, and then the last step would be to plug in our innermost functions, right? Plug in g equals h to the fourth plus one, and 
h equals 1 minus x. So we'll plug in g first, and then we'll plug in h. So f prime of x, we just said was minus 2g times 4h cubed. All right, so let's plug in g first. So that gives us minus 2h to the fourth plus 1 times 4h cubed. Okay, and then we plug in h. That gives us minus 2. Let's use brackets. 1 minus x to the fourth plus 1 times 4, 1 minus x cubed. All right, so then this would be our final derivative. f prime of x, or f of x was this whole composition, right? 1 minus x to the fourth plus 1, whole thing squared. All right, so if you think about this, you're really taking derivative of the outermost function, keeping the inside the same, then taking the derivative of the next function, keeping that the same, and then deriving, the, taking derivative of the innermost function, and putting that there. So that's where we get the minus sign here. Okay? And so the more problems you do, the, the, the more intuitive this will become.